Okay guys, what we are talking about today are functions. So as we get started, we're going to talk about relations and functions, how to tell if a relation is a function. So first let's talk with what actually is a relation, because you're like, what that's just a weird word. So a relation is any kind of relationship between values. So usually we're thinking about it as an ordered pair, like X and Y. Okay, every grouping of data of information is a relation. Not everyone is a function. To be a function, it takes something special. So let's get started first and make sure you understand all the different ways to represent relations. You can write relation, relations as a bunch of ordered pairs. Two, seven, four, six, three, five. You can write relations as an X, Y chart. So here I'm calling them tables, but they're just the same. Sometimes when you're younger, you call them X, Y charts. But basically all it is, this is a horizontal one, and this is a vertical one. It's the same thing. It's just listing those values. Two goes with seven, four goes with six, and negative five goes with negative three. We can also show graphs or show relations as graphs. And then lastly here, my last example is a mapping diagram. So I'm not sure how familiar you are with a mapping diagram. Sometimes I feel like they could be a little bit goofier, a little bit harder to understand. See how you've got this two and you've got this line going to the seven? Whenever I have a mapping diagram, I just rewrite it as an X, Y chart, just so I can be super clear I see it. That is the ordered pair two, seven. Four goes with the six. See how that arrow is there? And then negative five goes with the three. So as I look at this, that's just a mapping diagram. These are all different ways to represent relations. Okay, a real world example of a relation is if I'm talking about some sort of a vehicle or a way to get around and how many wheels it has. So a car, how many does a car have? Of course it has four. A bicycle, by means two, two. How many wheels does a boat have? Zero. So the car has four, the bicycle has two, the boat has zero. It's just a way to group your data. That is a relation. Every relation, you guys, has a domain and range. So the domain is the set of the inputs or the set of the x's. And the range is the set of the outputs or of the y values. So remember how we write the ordered pair x, y, and how the x comes first because it goes in ABC order? If I talk about inputs, i comes before o. So that helps me remember, hey, the domain is all the inputs. And the y's, the range, that's all the outputs. And also, when I write D and R together, like an ordered pair, D comes before R in ABC order. So I can remember that the domain is the X values or the inputs, and the range is the Y values or the outputs. Now, there are two really important rules to remember when you're talking about this, okay? Rule number one is if I ask you what the domain or the range is, and a number is there more than once, no repeats. I just tell them what the numbers are. You don't need to list it more than once. And the second rule is you want to write them in numerical order. So in, oh, in that, that started this called numerical order. Numerical order. In order from smallest to largest. So if I ask you to list the domain of something, you list them from the smallest to the largest, not in the order they were given to you. Okay, that's about domain and range. Now let's practice with the domain and the range. So here you have a table, okay? You have the input, one, seven, four, and two. So the domain are all of these values going across here. But I have to list them, remember, in order. So one, two, four, and seven, right? And the range is the set of the Y values. So those are the ones down here. So again, I got to list them in order. So nine, oopsie, nine, 11, 14, and 19. But really, it's pretty straightforward. It's really messy. Sorry about that. I'll do better at this next one. Okay, so now a same situation, except this time I'm looking at my 
ordered pairs. Remember, my domain is all the x's. So I got to list all of the x's. One, a five, a four, and a five. But remember that rule? No repeats. Remember, we just said that. We got to say no repeats for the x's or the y's. So a one, a four, and a five is my domain. Now let's look at the range. The range is the y values, right? So what are they? I've got a two, I've got a negative three, a nine, and 11. And so remember, you gotta put them in order. Don't forget about these little rules. So negative three is the smallest, then two, then nine, then 11. There, okay, pretty straightforward, just listing the domain and the range. So all of this is leading up to something. All of this is leading up to a function. This is the one we're going to talk about all day. So the function, a function is a special kind of a relation. It's a special relation where every input has a unique output. The inputs and the outputs, when they get paired together, the domain is paired with exactly one range value. Okay, so let me try to explain this in terms of a machine. So if this is a function, and it's a function machine, well, if I go up to the machine and I put in a 5, and the machine spits out a 2, right? You might have an idea what's happening when you go inside the machine. Maybe you could say it's subtracting 3. Could be something fancier going on, but you put in a 5 and it spits out a 2. Now, a little bit later, you go straight up to that machine, and you put up a 5, and this time it spits out a 9. And you're like, wait a second, I had the ordered pair five gives me a two, and then five gave me a nine. That is a broken machine. That means this machine doesn't work. You can't count on it, okay? So when I look at this, let's see, I gotta go to the screen. Okay, sorry. So if I'm talking about a function as a function machine, I want it to work. So a machine that takes the input and gives exactly one output. Now, when we're looking at things to see if they are functions or not, what I keep saying is every input has exactly one output, right? So when I'm talking about the input, remember that's the x's. So I always say, and I always sing it, it's all about the x, all about the x. Now, I sing it, and I don't say it's all about the bass. I sing, it's all about the X, all about the X, no Y, no Y. So we're talking about the inputs. The inputs are what you're paying attention to in terms of looking at the machine to see if it is a function or not. So the X's are not allowed to repeat unless they gave you the same exact Y. Because what about if I went up to this machine and I put in a 5 and it gave me a 2? And I went back up to that machine, and I put in a 5, and it gave me a 2. Would that machine be broken? No. So it would be giving me the same output. All right, let's practice this to maybe make it a little bit uh, better in terms of your understanding. Okay, let's talk about um, a person's height as a real-life example for a minute here. So if the person is the input, and their height is the output, okay? There can only be one person. So Scott is 6'5", Amy's 5'6", Amanda's 5'9", and Madeline's 5'9". Every person has only one height. So is this a function or not? So let's look and see what's going on here. Make my pen work. So Scott is 6'5", and Amy is 5'6". And Amanda is 5'9". And Madeline is also 5'9". Now, this is still a function. It's okay that Amanda and Madeline are the same height, but there's not more than one person of Amanda or Madeline. Okay, so it's okay. It's still a function because it's the Y that repeats. And remember, it's all about the base, all about the X. Okay, so let's look at this. Remember the song? We can say to ourselves, well, it's all about the X, all about the X, no Y. 
So start by looking at the axis. Are there any repeats in the axis? There are. So this machine, one time you put a four and it gives you a zero. One time you put a four and it gives you a one. That means no, this baby is not a function because every input, every X doesn't have a unique output. Now let's look at this one. So I didn't even have to, sorry, I didn't even have to look at the Y's because the X's told me the answers. Let's look at this one. Do the X's repeat? Nope. So I don't even have to look at the Y's. That one is a function. Every input has a unique output. Now, I'm just going to clarify here for you. Look, it's okay that the Y's repeated. No one cares about the Y. It's all about the X to determine if something is a function or not. So now I'm looking at this one. This is ordered pairs. So I'm going to look at the X's. Remember, it's all about the X, all about the X. So I've got a negative 6 a two and a negative six. Oh my gosh, this machine is broken because when I look at the stuff that goes with it, one time you put in the negative six and it spits out a one. Another time you put in the negative six and it spits out a seven. All right, let's look at this example. Now, what I'm seeing here is I've got a negative six, a two, a negative four, and a zero, so I don't even have to look at the y's. It doesn't matter if they repeat or not, because every input is different. So if I'm looking at this one, guys, I am looking at this, and I'm trying to figure out if this mapping diagram is a function or not. Every single time, what I need to do is I need to make an x, y chart, because I just can't quite remember how this is. Remember the four goes with the five, because that arrow. And the 4 goes with the 6. And the 4 goes with the 7. And the 4 goes with, I'm not even finished. Tell me, is this thing a function? Heck no. Because look at those X's that repeat. This thing is a big old broken machine. You go up to it. Can you count on it at all? No, it's not a function if it can't count on it. Because you don't know what it's going to do. You put the 4 in, it gives you all these different answers. Okay, let's try this next one. Again, I get kind of confused when I look at this. So I think whenever you have a mapping diagram, the easiest thing to do is to turn it into an X, Y chart. Five goes with nine. Okay, 10 goes with 10. That's okay, it doesn't hurt anything. 15 goes with nine. And 15 goes with 22. And lastly, 25 goes with eight. Uh-oh, uh-oh, it's all about the X, all about the X, no Y. See this X that repeats? That makes this baby a broken machine. So nope, it's not a function. Well, this is getting clearer. Sometimes when you have a graph, you could determine if something is a function without even singing or anything about the X's. You can do a vertical line test. When I was your age, I could never remember what vertical is. I would always say horizon, horizontal, vertical is the other one. But you guys are better than me at this. I think your whole generation is good at this because you talk about people getting, oh, that's my dog. Shh, Chansey, I'm making a video. Hey, hey. No one else is allowed to walk down the street. A vertical line only passes through one at time. It's only allowed to pass through one time. So horizon, horizontal, the other one's vertical. And I was saying, you guys know what vertical means because you talk about athletes getting their verticals. That's what I was saying before my dog was so rude. Sorry. Okay, so all you got to see here is that a vertical line, an up and down line, is only allowed to hit one time. So all I got to do is I go straight up and down. Oops, I don't know how to get rid of this. Um, oh, my goodness, I don't want this. Oh, there we go. A vertical line. I'm looking for a line straight up and down. And if it hits more than once, it fails. It's not a function. So look at this one. That is a terrible line. But it would hit there twice, meaning that is not a function. It's got any vertical line I draw is only allowed to hit one time. So this is okay. It is a function. How about over here? This one is okay. Oh my goodness. There's a lot of movement going on here. So when I look at this, I can hit this only one time. 
and this guy is going to fail because it hits it twice. So a vertical line is only allowed to hit it one time. Okay, this has been kind of long, but I hope that you're getting what functions are.